Welcome to Heart Talk, episode 25. I hope today you are feeling like this, calm, serene. Um, but if you're feeling like this, that's okay because we have um, a really special conversation in store today and hopefully some time to really dive into some shapes and colors and um, get to connect a little bit. It's been a little while. Those of you guys who've been tuning in. Hi, Tommy. Hi, Farah. Um, those of you guys who've been tuning in. Uh, no Flash has been hosting the last few weeks and I'm back today for our very special six month mark of Heart Talk. Um, I didn't really know how long the series would go when I started, but I'm really excited to have today's conversation with Tana Torrent, who is one of the first artists to become part of Alpha Arts Alliance. And um, our second conversation today is with Rain Span, who's a recent um, addition to the collective, but a beautiful one. Um, and the amazing thing is, is how during this season we have managed to network even though we haven't physically met each other. Um, Tana brought Rain's work to me and they have since connected, but we have not all ever physically shared a space, but today we get to. Um, so we have some special pieces we're gonna be talking about. I have some surprises for Tana as well. If you are watching and you are planning to stick around, I suggest you get a writing utensil pen, pencil, marker, whatever you feel like, and a sketchbook, because we are gonna be playing a game today with um, Tana and Rain. So if you wanna participate with us, just grab a utensil and a piece of paper or a notebook. Um, and with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get it started with the lovely Tana Torrent. Up a little bit because surprise, surprise, Tana is also a DJ, but y'all didn't know. We're gonna learn a lot today. Hello, hey, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm just getting my markers ready. I forgot. Oh, that I need to participate. Today? Yeah, so how you doing? good. I was playing your SoundCloud just now, Tana Torrent. So, um I'm so excited. I know that your first time in IG Live was with me a little while ago on Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you coming back today and trusting me. Um, I was just telling the folks watching that you're one of the first artists that became a part, that made this even become a collective. I Art remember the night we met, it was at a whole like collective party and Flash was mm -hmm. there too. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's Simone is in here. So I'm going to do a little shout out to an artist I connected with today. I was telling her, Flash has brought so many incredible artists into my life. And I met you, Zena, and Jess that night. And it was the, yeah. night, of the, blood, the night of the blood moon, which is an incredible omen. Do you guys watch it? Yeah. Um, and it was intensely emotional. And we have known each other a little over a year, but been through a lot. It feels like a lifetime. Yeah. Yeah, and we end this for life. So I wanted to um, dive a bit into your journey, and then we're going to play our game. Um, how did you get the name Tana Torrent? Well, my name is Tana, and Torrent I adopted from my French produ pr producers. Mm -hmm. A couple of guys in France that I used to make music with and stuff, and it was like a group name that just stuck. And I was like, this is easier than my real name, which is Gail Revo. Mm -hmm. So I just stuck with Tana Torrent. And so, yeah, that's it. It's not really a big, big deal. It's just and Tana it's, Torrent. It's, it sticks and it suits you so well. It's um, easy to remember for people, which is mm -hmm. good for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have um, spent time in a few cities and I am would like to hear like how has the journey from London to Paris to New York, um, how did Paris impact your art? Well, when I got there, I couldn't speak French, <laughs> but I was half like my, on my father's side is French. So mm -hmm. it was a great opportunity to really break out of uh, my UKness, my Britishness. Mm. and explore another country and in that process I started to discover other talents like the music production a little bit of music performance as well um, 
and the art wasn't really something that I focused on, but it was something I was trying to move away from. But what wow. I really loved over there was photography. It's where I met my uh, mentor, and it's where I really focused on using film. Uh, I used my first Hasselblad and just, you know, street photography and then Paris Fashion Week, just little stuff like that opened up like a whole new whole new opportunities to me, which I didn't see while I was living in London. Mm. So that was a cool, cool expansion of just creative potential while were I was you, there. Were you spending more time, so you're spending more time with music, were you also spending more time with photography while you were in <laughs> France? Music and photography, like mm -hmm. just between the two of them, but not really art. So like, why is that? Why did you like take a pause or step away from it? I just felt this pressure at home because I was at that age. I basically moved to France when I was 19, 20, mm -hmm. borderline. And that was during the same time I was like supposed to apply for university. I was like, I don't know what I want to study. I don't know if I want to do graphic design, photography, fashion, art. Mm -hmm. So I took a, a gap year, which turned into a, a whole new life. And um, yeah, I just, I wanted to get away from figuring out what I wanted to do and just explore what I could do. Yeah. Be too restrictive on myself, mm -hmm. which, was, which was good. I'm glad I did it. Yeah. So what was the energy that you felt in coming to New York and how that impacted because you returned to visual art here and i know it's a lot i mean i know that's a big question so i'm Grow sure <laughs> growing up with american movies arriving at jfk was was just like that i was like oh my god e yellow taxis everything and you see the skyline when you're pulling in on um was it the bqe or something mm -hmm. At the time, I didn't know it was the Broken Queens Express, but it, it, it felt surreal. It was overwhelming. There's one area in London called Canary Wharf, which has got all the high rises, but it is nothing compared to walking through Manhattan. You feel, you end up feeling this big. Yeah. You look up, it's like, wow, this is like the biggest city in the world. But it's mm -hmm. not after living there for a few years. Yeah. Was, um, I... I'd seen a lot more, like I've always seen street art. Street art's in every every city, London, Paris, there's, there's graffiti everywhere, but New York had like this different type of edge to it, which felt more accessible to people who didn't go to fancy art schools. So that's uh, that was really appealing to me because I didn't mm -hmm. have to feel that type of pressure to perform within a peer group in order to succeed within something that I naturally enjoyed doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, we have um, some viewers in here that have interacted with um, us together at events. And for those of you who have come to the states, um, I'm also curious. Like, I I really want this to be an interactive conversation. So if you're watching this and you are an immigrant like myself or like Tana or maybe more fresh. What's that first memory you had when you got off the plane or got off um, the train? And Tana is one of the few people, you're one of the few people in my life who has been to my family home. You've met my parents. Yeah. And, yeah, and I loved being able to do that because you've seen another side of, of me as well um, and being able to bring you there. But I remember... Um, that's something we spend time talking about is like a uh, concept of home and how we create and create safety and trust through art, which I hope we're doing. Yeah, I mean, before meeting you at that great event, like I knew a couple artists, but there wasn't any, I didn't have a sense of community or like feeling of belonging before then. So after meeting you and meeting some of the people around you and everything, that's when I started to feel a better sense of family and home within being foreign yeah. which is nice because it wasn't just people who were from new york it was other people like me who were into the same thing as me also artists also immigrants and people who also wanted to feel like part of a collective which is essentially mm -hmm. what we are yeah yeah and it's in brooklyn too because new york's big but brooklyn is where everything really happens i feel yeah i feel i've been preaching about Brooklyn all day, but I really feel like the world has the greatest potential to change here. Like there's a reason that we are all here, connected here at this time in history. Mm -hmm. 
and there's a reason that I think we have met. So I wanted to dive a bit into your pieces um, specifically. Um, I love how you gravitate um, towards certain body parts in your work. And that's something that we have reflected back on one another. So um, those of you who are familiar with Tana's work have probably picked up on some of these things. So I wanted to start first with a piece that a very special I swiped out my bad. I wanted to start with a very special piece. Um, yeah, and see if I, uh, oh, I guess I didn't save it. Um, okay. Currently, is there a body part that you're finding yourself thinking about or gravitating or s staying fixated on? The head. The head. Yes. Well, I know. The head, is, the head is something that I've focused on uh, because in the recent years, I have come across a couple of head injuries, which have made me focus more on the skull and the cranium and the brain. Mm -hmm. Because also tied to that is a lot of my work um, is around psychology, mm -hmm. a little bit. like the mm -hmm. spectrum of emotions and all of that happens inside your head, right? Um, and skeletons, I'm getting closer to skeletons and stripping things bare. Ah, so wow. I think it's Teeth, uh, and then taking everything else off. Mm -hmm. I have. N I want to come back to that of like skeletons and the fact that that is a layer of stripping as well, ripping off the flesh. I never thought of it that way. Yeah. Um, at all. This is a piece that I think you've been returning to a bit um, lately, and as you think of the head, and I think you might have it there with you. So this is a in process. I think the one Tana's going to show us is more developed. And just as Tana said, the elements that you see really being brought out here, what body elements? I mean, it started with, um, you know, just a face in the, in the one that Sadaf has. I don't mm -hmm. know if I'm up or down. But uh, I, I painted it, I wanted to try and recreate something like this. Yep. Um, but then this happens. And then yeah. here I've got like, here's, Here's one eye, here's another eye, here's the nose, and here's the teeth. So mm -hmm. it's like a skeleton on top of a face now. Mm -hmm. And then I've got some more bones over here for the hands. Yes. And uh, yeah. over here, some more bones. I like having, um, how do I describe it? I'm, I'm really into duality. So I want to show both sides at the same time. Yeah. So I don't know, I hope that when like, when it's like seen, it's got like a sort of like, oh, I'm seeing this, oh, I'm seeing this, depending on where you're at personally. Yeah, could you bring it up closer for us? People are really drawn to it. Yeah, and those of you who are watching, um, uh, we have pieces on standby that you can own, original Tana Torrance. Um, if you're interested, hit me up, I'll send you the listing, but we do have pieces that could be yours. See, when you worked on i found it this piece in my home i remember after you finished this piece and we came back to it and those of you who've been in my home have seen it um who came the mushroom journey i also had a big mural up of tana's work i don't know if you remember saying this but you said to me like man i have not been able to create something so elegant since then so great right. are you still feeling that way yeah, I remember the the day before. I think the day or the two. I, I painted that one within three days. Yeah, I started and I finished it. And it, it was a two days or one day before I started painting it. It was you and Natty who both gave me like this amazing hug. Yeah. So I was feeling very replenished after what I had came out of, and um, it's hard to get that feeling back. <laughs> yeah. I know, we miss you. But it, it's a feeling that lives in us. We're going to bring it back. I thought, actually, I have something that I think you might enjoy to see, but I found. Oh, you got the prune. Oh, 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 oh. So if you came to our pop up show in October, yes. Oh, high five. High five, girl. Bring it in. Bring it in. Uh huh. Um, Tell us what you did here, those of us, those of people who weren't there, because these are also, we, I have, um, I have two. 
And so here you can see the graduation of like, that was a fresh, I think this was number, this was the first one and you gave it to me. Mm -hmm. There's only 50 of these. And then this is the, in the middle, this is 32. So on the day of uh, everyone who came, I was really grateful that they came and I wanted people to leave. I didn't want people to leave empty handed. <laughs> so I hand carved this hand print and then I hand printed 50 sheets of archive paper and I, I wanted to give everyone a little, a little, a little, I wanted to give everyone a hand for coming and, and supporting me. Yep. And uh, I hope you still like that. Yeah. Um, there's only 50. There's only 50 and I have one that could be someone's if they want <laughs> it. Um, so I wanted to go into a little bit about hands. Now, you have collected montages of hands, like take pictures of your hand interacting with different things. Um, how many hands do you think you've been sent over the year? I haven't counted. I just have a small folder full of hands. <laughs> um, Very I do have something in mind with them. However, it's something that I'm waiting to do because mm -hmm. I have some more hands to collect. Yes. I'm going to make a print, which is going to be very large. I first need to edit each individual hand and remove any kind of um, mark, natural markings yeah. so that they remain incognito. Yeah. So uh, if you have, I'm going to run through some of your work briefly. Um, and those of you who are watching, we know that Tana does a lot with the head and smiles and also hands. So in the piece we visited here, you'll see the hands. This uh -huh. We have this one. <laughs> Why on fire? Global warming. This was a climate change. Comment. Yeah, green hand, blue ocean. And it's like kind of ironic because it's by our own hand and our own doing that things uh -huh. are burning down. Like, look at the, the forest fires that happened recently in California because of the gender reveal. I don't know if that's how it really started, but... I believe it. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of fire happening. Yeah, can you tell us? I know why. I'm going to flip this because I know it's hard to see. Can you tell us what the hands represent here for you? Your hands are a, a, a symbol of love and communication, really. You mean look at people who are, are deaf, for example. They have to communicate with sound language. And you can say a lot with a pair of hands if you have them, if you're lucky enough. Mm -hmm. And this, I also recently learned that they have some of the most nerve endings as well. So they feel the most. And it's just, their hands, it was even you that pointed out to me that most, most people's uh, palm is a similar complexion compared to the back side mm -hmm. of the hand as well. It's something we all have in common. And it makes us human with our posable thumbs. Um, uh, yeah, I just associate them with affection, love, communication. The nails on some hands remind me of my mother because my nails are a mess right now. They're always had, has very long nails. So that's also like a thing for me. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. What about um, teeth? I've had braces once. I don't know if anyone else has had braces. They hurt. Um, I like crocodiles. Twice. Crocodiles have a lot of teeth. <laughs> <laughs> you, we need teeth to eat. Um, we grow them twice, right? Once you're when you're a baby, you grow mm -hmm. them, and then when you're an adult. But also how mm -hmm. we smile and use them. Uh, you you said grimace earlier. Yeah. So sometimes sometimes a smile isn't a smile. It's a show of teeth, and a show of teeth is something that a predator can sometimes do to warn off pre other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. Nice and dirty white smile. Yeah. <laughs> your um, teeth whitening is really big now as well. So yes, keep seeing all those ads. Yeah, I was curious. Um, so. Rain is watching and the I think one of the pieces when you sent me his profile, this was the piece that I saw first. 
And I was, <laughs> was hoping you could kind of share your thoughts on what you feel and interpret as you look at this piece it's called Violet Thoughts. So I really like his use, uh, his speed of line. Mm. It, you know, it's just got a lot of energy in it, but it's, it's also his flowers. He's got flowers in like, if not all of his works. And I really like the floral aspect because it's just, it's just, you know, it's growth, it's beautiful and it just goes with everything. Yeah. Not all, not all, I haven't seen a lot of teeth in his stuff. It's just a lot of profiles, but even like the human figureheads have like flowers growing out of them. And I think that's really beautiful. Mm, yeah. And that's, we're going to look at this piece with rain in a bit, but. But he also <laughs> works a lot. Like he pumps out work so quickly. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And it's all like, makes it look easy, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks. We'll find out. Um, it's that piece, Violet Thoughts reminds me of Tada a bit, just because of the presence of teeth and flowers. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a similarity there. So now fun facts about Tana Torrent, y'all, is we're gonna switch it up a little bit because we're gonna shift into game gear. If you are tuning in, please grab a pencil or a sketchbook. Um, but those of you who don't know, Tana is also an amazing photographer, an amazing DJ. So if you're watching, I'm going to ask for you to listen to the mix I'm about to play because we need a little audience interaction. So that way Tana has a prompt. And then Tana is going to work on a drawing um, for the next few minutes, about three to five minutes um, that our next guest is then going to work off of. So if you're watching, I want you to listen to this song, um, but we do need a body part. Uh, we know that Tana plays a lot with hands and teeth. So if you're watching, drop a body part that Tana should explore in this live drawing she's about to do. Um, what's a body part that Tana should explore? And that in our next interview, Rain is going to uh, interpret on that. Um, Tana, I'm going to play a song for you, and as you listen, I want you to think of the mood that you want to take. Mr. Hip, draw us, drop us a body part. Ruth, drop us a body part. We got shoulders. Shoulders? Okay, shoulders. Tan. Shoulders. That's a good one, Tan. We got shoulders thigh. And thigh. Shoulders, thigh. Um, feel free I to combine or choose. I love la lady shoulders in particular are very nice. Yeah. For sure. Lady and, <laughs> uh, we got chin. Nice. And okay. now, as neck, you listen to this song, shoulder. what? Okay, and we got waist. I'm going to play one of Tana's mixes as she goes ahead and takes your suggestions to create something. And you guys go ahead and join us too. Shoulders, neck. Thigh, chin. If you have a medium, a sketchbook, a pencil, a canvas, five minutes, we're going to get into it.
Uh oh, town has gone, but we're gonna keep going. We are drawing our interpretation of any of these body parts, shoulders, neck, chin, waist, thighs. And what I will do as we, as we pretend to come back. Um, here are some of the prints that we will have for sale this weekend at the stoop sale. Um, here's one. Here's a very special framed print by Tana. Another one. So if you see anything you like and you are interested, DM me. Um, and our fabulous intern Sahana has made a listing. And I also will have these. So you can see already here an interpretation of the neck and the shoulders. So Tan, this one you might like. We got shoulders and neck in there. Thank you, they're from Rwanda. Um, I got them when I visited Victoria. Thank you. Let's see. This one is crazy. So as you guys look at this one, what's your interpretation of that piece? What's your interpretation of this piece? Yeah, it's beautiful and framed and ready to go. So come to us. Oops, say it. To me, it's about mutual support, giving gratitude. Um, we're gonna bring Tana back in and see how she's progressed. Love you, Nayala. We love you. Connectivity, absolutely. Yeah. Do you feel like there might be any sort of potential negative interpretation? My pen leaked. Oh, oh, that's okay. Harmony. Okay. So we're going to give you um, one more minute. I love how it's, I love how you approach the neck and the shoulders. My favorite part of the shoulders and neck probably it has to be like collarbones. Yeah. <laughs> if, if they feel like a natural blueprint, maybe because they're bones, I don't know. Yeah, maybe because you can see the bone really clearly through the, through the skin. And hey, Miss, Miss Ban. Um, we are doing a drawing challenge if you're just coming in. We've asked for body parts. The music in the background is by DJ Tana Torrent, which you can find on SoundCloud. So Tana, as you draw, can you tell folks how they can support you, your postcards, your Patreon? So I have a Patreon, which I haven't fully set up because I need you guys to basically help me direct it in a way. So I'm gonna be posting uh, images on there and works, of, works in progress and maybe a little bit of vlogging. But to start off with like an audience, I'm gonna need some feedback to find out what you would want in return. And I'm starting off with, just a little chin here. I'm starting off with sending uh, monthly postcards to anyone who ends up subscribing to me. Um, and the subscription postcards are gonna be at a discounted rate. So if you would want to buy them directly, there's one price, but if there's a subscription with my Patreon, it's going to be deducted and then it's going to be each month I send you a new piece of work or an old piece, depending on little postcards directly to you, as well as other things that are available on Patreon, which are postcards, t-shirts and other things which are a lot more time consuming to print, you know, individually. Yeah, and if you are interested in any originals, um, contact me or Tana directly. We have pieces that are bring incredible energy and are ready to hang. Um, so with that, uh, we have time to take any questions from our viewers. Um, and then we're going to transition to Rain the Neo, who... Yeah, hand in hand in terms of artistic talent with Tana. So any questions for Ms. Tana Torrance going once? 
going twice. And then Tana, if you want to keep working on that um, at the end of uh, my conversation with Rain, we can return and see what, how it's developed. I'll be here. I'll probably start a fresh sheet. Okay. Hand. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> folks, if you're not already following Tana Torrent, please do so. Tana, any final words for um, those watching? Thank you for watching and just taking the time out to be here. It means a lot to us, for real. I've been out here alone for the most part. I'm in North Carolina, by the way, not in New York. And I will be coming back soon. But um, yeah, just thank you. Thank you for showing support. Thank you for liking and commenting and joining in at any, at any point. Any point whatsoever is appreciated. Yeah, we love you. You're someone that definitely makes an impression um, when people meet you. I saw your art before I saw you, and I already had to know who you were. So <laughs> keep going. Keep going, baby. We're going to the top. You I'm going to be right here. Yeah, all of us. I appreciate it. All right, so I'll, I'll talk to you in a bit. Okay. Bye, bye to town, everyone. Bye. bye <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do a quick little... Um, Two minute break so I can save the video and come back for our conversation with Rain the Neo. But if you are watching, you are in Brooklyn, um, you are welcome to come through this Sunday to the first Alpha Arts Alliance uh, gathering since COVID. It is outdoor, it is safe. Um, we will have art, masks, food, treats. Um, come with your mask or buy a new one from Roost. And we will have originals. Um, original art for sale as well as prints uh, by Tana and other Alpha Arts. and other alpha artists. So with that, um, I'm going to hop off and um, hop back. Please stay, don't go anywhere. One minute and 30 seconds. <laughs>